Hi, I'm Steve for BoatTest.com and today I am on the all new 387 CCS from Formula. This is the first of the sports series of the all new center console boats from Formula. So let's do a full features inspection and performance evaluation. We'll start here in the cockpit that measures a full 5 feet by 9 feet 9 inches. Cap rails top out at 30 inches and there's padded bolsters going all the way around. A lot of features going on here. We'll begin with the transom seat pulls out, has a nice high seat back, so there's a lot of comfort going on in this. The cushions are varying densities that add to the comfort level. Just ahead, we can have opposing seating that pulls out, latches into position, and take a look at this. If we bring this out, push a button, there's a footrest that comes out, and this is also a cooler. The comfort level continues with air conditioning vents at the seat back, and that's tied into the 18,000 BTU air conditioning system. On these sunny days when we want a little extra shade, we can bring out the SureShade awning just overhead. And we can slide this seat out of the way, and we have a sink with a cutting surface that fits into position in the center serving area, and then plenty of storage going all around. Let's take a look. It begins with drawers, more and more drawers, and this drawer then includes dividers that can go into multiple positions. Two more drawers to the port quarter. And large index storage boxes that also include freezer plates. And as you can see, these are high quality plates that will last. So fit and finish wise, these hatches, they're held open by tension hinges, gaskets all the way around. And by the way, these are the best gaskets I've ever seen on deck hatches of a center console. Outside is guttered and channeled to bring water overboard. Also, notice that they're all lockable, foam padding on all decking, textured upholstery, contrast bead welting, all sewn with Tenera UV resistant thread. Here are some nice convenient features, a Rockford Fosgate stereo, USB connectivity, the beverage holders are lighted and draining overboard. This is the first of five USB ports seen throughout the boat and 20 stainless steel beverage holders. The tower support and grab rails are all powder coated and all of the upholstery is treated with prefix stain resistant guard. To the starboard side of the leaning post, storage includes a paper towel holder, fire extinguisher, and a control for the freezer plates in the index storage. Just ahead, a trash receptacle. And to the port hand side, storage with beverage holders and another control for the freezer plate on this side, and a refrigerated drawer. Let's move back to the transom. In the port quarter, there's an electric grill. We have an option for putting two live wells at the transom, but instead we have the standard trunk storage on this boat. To port, there's a standard boarding door slash dive door, and notice that when I bring the cap rail up, there are hidden beverage holders underneath. The dive ladder stores right alongside. I also like that there's a swing out grab handle. The door opens inward, so we can use it as a boarding gate from either another boat or even a dock. To the starboard side, there's undergunnel rod storage, a tow rail for safety, and then speakers to both sides. These also have LED multicolor lights. Moving to operational features, cable TV connection, dual breakers for the shore power connections, automatic freshwater flush out ports are provided. The shore power connectivity is just at the port side of the transom. In the center of the deck, there's a compartment that groups all of the mechanical features together, including the compressor for the freezer plates, the Seakeeper 3 gyro, and the 8.5 kW diesel generator plumped to a 25 gallon tank. A transom door gives us access to the swim platforms 
each one coming out five feet to both sides of the Mercury engines. There's a two foot platform ahead of the engines, allowing us to walk back and forth between the two. Now to the ends of both swim platforms, there's a three step reboarding ladder, an integrated grab handle, and the eight inch cleats are pull up. Notice that we not only have a clean installation, but we can lift a hatch for bringing them completely out of the water or lower the hatch when we want to increase the service area. Moving forward, there's an additional index storage compartment with dedicated space for a five gallon bucket just above, storage for lines, and then the carbon fiber poles for the bow sunshade. Back to the starboard side, the index storage also includes a fish cleaning board and fender storage just ahead of that. Continuing forward, I appreciate that there's not only a full length grab handle on the side of the console, this one powder coated, there's also one to the starboard bulwarks and then just inside the cap rail. There's a space for putting stuff with another Rockford Fosgate stereo and USB connectivity just alongside that. And then just ahead of the console, dual lounges, beverage holders to both sides. There's a flip down armrest that includes more connectivity and still more beverage holders. Cap rails increase height as we move forward to 35 inches. There's storage just underneath. There's lounge seating to both port and starboard. A center table and cushion adds to the seating that combines with the lounges just behind us, so it's a great conversational atmosphere. We can remove that table, have access all the way to the bow bolster. We can also raise a table here to form a cushion, make this going all the way across, or make it into a table for dining. I appreciate that there's a vinyl cover for the table when it's in the elevated position. With the forward table removed, it gets dedicated storage underneath the lounge seat. There are beverage holders all the way around. Spot for putting your cell phone right in between the beverage holders at the side positions. I really like the comfort level of how the armrest drops down on the bolster and there's an angled grab rail just ahead. Additionally, there's storage underneath the two side seats. These underseat storage compartments are self-draining. The hatches are held open with tension hinges and held closed with magnetic catches. Little storage cubby and storage below is repeated to this side. And then we come to the cabin, which is accessed from the port side of the console. Well, in my opinion, we've got a roomy cabin. At the entrance, there's headroom of six feet, four inches. A step will drop down, and that brings the headroom to seven feet. There's a 32 inch flat screen TV to the forward bulkhead, and is flanked by two JL Audio speakers. We've got U-shaped seating that can, of course, be converted into a berth with the addition of a filler cushion. And when we do that, we're looking at a full depth of six feet, four inches. Hull side windows are to both port and starboard, and there are blinds that can be pulled down and hold position magnetically. Storage is above. Climate control to the port hand side. Rockford Fosgate stereo to the starboard side. There's also a window in the center of the forward bulkhead and that can allow light in when you bring the armrest down on the forward lounges. Behind the seat back to the port side, main electrical panel. Just in front of that, batteries. To the opposite side, there's additional storage, some electronics components. Just ahead of that is the hot water heater. And if I pull this down, I can bring out the drawer that houses the filler cushions and the pedestal. The galley consists of a microwave, counter space, Corian, covered single basin sink, a storage drawer, and notice that when this is in the closed position and locked, you've got a grab handle, and then a refrigerated drawer underneath. The head, well, it's a wet head. There are four hooks to the side so we can hang our wet gear there. What a nice place to have it dry. Opening port light, there's a mirrored cabinet with storage, an inductive charger in the head. That's a nice touch. Vessel sink, storage underneath. Let's move on to the helm, and I could go on all day about this, but we'll try and keep it down to the essentials. Dual 22 inch Raymarine displays. We can also go with Garmin. Compass is center mounted right in line with the center mounted helm. Air conditioning vents tied into the 18,000 BTU air conditioning. Electrical switches are grouped just below the multifunction displays. Three beverage holders. The trim tabs are just ahead of the throttles, making it easy to manipulate those while we're underway. JPO joystick just alongside. 
There's a remote control for the main displays. I'd like to see that move further back onto one of the armrests. There are a total of three inductive chargers. Right alongside the wheel is the standard bow thruster with dock hold. There's one, two, three controllers for the helm seats, the center one being standard, the two outer ones optionally adjustable. There's a storage cubby to starboard and a storage drawer to port. Up above, we've got speakers, VHF, Seakeeper panel, display for the engines, remote control for the spotlight. All three seats include flip bolsters, flip armrests, and air conditioning vents at the base of the seat back. We stand on a platform that's eight inches off the main deck, and there's also storage underneath. There's tempered glass all the way around the console and the forward windshield. Take a look at this. Opens fully on electrically actuated rams. Now we not only increase our ventilation, but we also eliminate any glare coming back from the windshield at night. Great feature. Now all this is under the protection of the standard hardtop, and what a hardtop it is. Completely contoured, RGB lighting, speakers, hatch to get up to the top, heavy duty supports, grab rails, spreader lights on all sides, and there are tracks going around the whole thing so we can enclose the entire helm area. With the extendable awning aft and the bow shade installed, now we can have the boat's full length protected from the sun. Some options to consider are the gray decking or the wood tone non-skid, Corian for the helm or teak, and at the bow, Corian armrest, or we can get that teak as well. Fully forward, there's a Lumar windlass leading to a through the stem anchor roller. There's easy access to the road alongside. We have control switches and a freshwater wash down. To the sides of the compartment, there are eight inch pull up cleats and there are four of these cleats to each side of the boat. Engine packages, well you can go with triple or dual installations. The triples start at 300, go to 350, 400 and 450 racing. The duals, like on our test boat, will be twin 600 horsepower. The Formula 387 CCS has a length overall of 41 feet 2 inches, a beam of 12 feet and a draft of 46 inches. With an empty weight of 22,500 pounds, 78.5% fuel, and two people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 25,010 pounds. With the twin 600 horsepower Mercury Verados turning 27.5 pitch propellers and wound up to 6,400 RPMs, our speed topped out at 58.4 miles per hour. Best cruise came in at 5,000 RPM and 43.7 miles per hour. At that speed, the 58.3 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 0.7 miles per gallon in a range of 236 statute miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 350 gallon total fuel capacity. In acceleration tests, we reached planing speed in 6 seconds, 20 miles an hour in 7.2, 30 came and went in 11.6, and we cruised through 40 miles per hour in 16.8 seconds. There's an awful lot to like about the handling characteristics of a formula, and this 387 TCS is no exception. It's just outstanding. It's a heavy boat, and she's built solidly, so any waves that you hit are going to be transferred through the whole boat rather than just one section of the boat. And it's not really a hit either. She just kind of penetrates those waves. I mean, we're in the intracoastal waterway here, so we're not getting a lot of sea conditions, but the wakes of the passing boats that we're getting, that's about where I'm judging what I'm talking about. If I go at full speed, hit the wake, yeah, there's a, a little bit of a hull slap, but again, it's reverberated through the whole boat. Back it down to a good cruise speed, and you just go right through the wave. That's where you really want to be. Now, turns, she'll lean over about 20 degrees into a turn if you press it hard, as I do during a test, but there's no need to do that either. So she's very comfortable during normal turns. As far as speed goes, if you want to get top speed out of it, Go ahead and get up to the top RPM, and then you can bring the trim up a little more. It'll go from maybe 15 to bring it up to maybe 18% on the trim gauge. That'll get you your top speed, but why do you want to do that? You're only getting a few more miles an hour at the cost of a lot more gallons per hour. Let the auto trim do its thing, and you'll have great performance all the way through. There's an awful lot to like about this 387 CCS. It also comes in a fish version, so you should check that video out as well. Either way, you're getting formula quality, build, strength, 
and handling characteristics, and that's the formula difference. And that's my full features inspection and performance evaluation of the all-new 387 CCS from Formula Boats. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve, and we'll see you on the water. Thank you.